Tomo News presents Diabetes. Artificial intestine endo barrier could treat obesity and diabetes. Imperial College London has launched the trial use of a device known as the endo barrier, aimed at treating obesity and type 2 diabetes. The endo barrier is a plastic tube that enters the body through the mouth and is placed at the end of the stomach into the small intestine. The plastic surface prevents food from being digested by the intestine and this tricks the brain into feeling full. This also provokes the production of a glucagon-like peptide, a hormone that drives the production of insulin. The endo barrier can only be left inside the body for one year, but researchers hope that the metabolic changes it creates will be permanent even after the device is removed. The developer of the device, GI Dynamics, said endo barrier is approved and commercially available in multiple countries, but it is not approved for sale in the U.S. Great news for chocolate lovers! Researchers have found there are compounds in chocolate that could help to prevent and treat type 2 diabetes. Beta cells inside the islet of Langerhans in the pancreas are responsible for secreting insulin, the hormone that regulates blood sugar levels. When someone suffers from type 2 diabetes, the beta cells malfunction and produce insufficient levels of insulin. Compounds found naturally in cocoa, called epicatin monomers, were found to be able to increase the ability of beta cells to secrete insulin. The compound successfully helped mice on a high-fat diet to cope with elevated blood sugar levels, as well as decrease the extent of their obesity. Researchers are looking for ways to extract the compound out of cocoa in order to create more effective treatments for diabetes patients. Human cloning, the cure for diabetes. Scientists in New York announced on Monday that they had used human cloning techniques to create stem cells able to produce insulin, effectively curing diabetes. Type 1 diabetes occurs when the body's immune system destroys insulin-producing beta cells in the pancreas resulting in insulin deficiency and high blood sugar levels. For the first time, scientists have successfully replaced the damaged DNA of a type 1 diabetes sufferer with the healthy genetic material of an infant donor. The hope is that when these new cells are injected back into the diabetic patient, they will begin to produce insulin. The procedure would prevent the need for daily insulin injections and effectively cure the disease. Rising temperatures could be linked to an increase in diabetes cases. A recent study shows that an increase in cases of type 2 diabetes may be linked to global warming, including 100,000 new annual cases in the U.S. alone. According to the Centers for Disease Control and Prevention, about one out of every three Americans will develop type 2 diabetes. A study published in the journal BMJ Open Diabetes Research and Care found that as the average annual temperature rose by 1 degree Celsius, the number of diabetes cases rose by 3.1 per 10,000 people. Researchers suspect the rise could be due to the inactivity of brown adipose tissue, a natural body fat that produces heat from burning the fat stored in organs to keep the body warm when temperatures drop. If temperatures stay warm, the inactivity of brown adipose tissue can increase fat stored in organs, causing glucose intolerance and diabetes. According to the World Health Organization, about 422 million people worldwide suffer from either type 1 or type 2 diabetes. Pollution can stress you out too. New research from China may explain the connection between air pollution and heart disease, stroke, and an increased chance of death. A study from China's Fudan University says that long-term exposure to air pollution can boost stress levels, alter metabolism, and increase the risk of cardiovascular disease. Scientists placed 55 students in two groups with functioning and malfunctioning air purifiers inside student dormitories in Shanghai. They observed them for over 12 days before swapping the purifiers, then tracked the students for another nine days. Students exposed to dirtier air had increased stress hormones, blood sugar, high blood pressure, poor response to insulin, and other ailments. All of these can result in cardiovascular disease, stroke, and diabetes. 
students in the group with cleaner air, which meant exposure to only half the amount of pollution, were all found to have had a reduction in stress levels. It's worth pointing out that Fudan University is one of the most prestigious and, as a result, uber-selective state schools in China. And only something like 0.2% of the millions of prospective university students get in each year. And that's after working through a vexing state education system and before putting in the actual university work. Point being, it might not just be the air that's affected the students' stress levels. So drinking is not all bad then, huh? A new study shows that drinking a glass of wine or beer several times a week may lower your risk of developing type 2 diabetes. The findings suggest that men who drank 14 alcoholic drinks a week had a 43% lower chance of developing type 2 diabetes than non-drinkers. Women who had 9 drinks a week had a 58% lower chance than non-drinkers. However, the findings show that hard liquor had no such effect on men and would increase the risk of diabetes for women, whereas wine appeared to provide benefits for both men and women. The research also highlights the importance of spacing out alcohol intake, because those who only drank once a week were associated with a higher risk than those who drank several times per week. U.S. health experts say they wouldn't recommend people increase their drinking based on this study. They say the study did not provide a proven explanation of any link between alcohol consumption and diabetes. U.S. Preventative Services Task Force, a government-backed group of experts in preventative medicine, says that all pregnant women should be screened for gestational diabetes, which increases the risk of complications during and after birth in both the mother and the child. Insulin regulates blood sugar levels by unlocking cells for glucose uptake. Late in pregnancy, the placenta secretes hormones that block insulin's activity, causing high blood sugar and cutting off glucose from the body's cells. Inability of the body to regulate blood glucose is the main symptom of gestational diabetes. The fetus receives high concentrations of glucose, leading to excessive growth and higher risks of premature birth, among other complications. Women with higher blood sugar and excessive weight are at greater risk of developing gestational diabetes. According to the American Diabetes Association, this condition affects 18% of pregnancies. Child takes the wheel when elderly driver suffers diabetic attack. Meet Christopher Wheeler. When driving with his 70-year-old neighbor Alfred Smith last week, this 10-year-old Alabama boy found himself in a terrifying situation. Smith began suffering from a diabetic attack while driving on Interstate 65 last week. Instead of panicking, Christopher took control of the car and brought it to a halt. A state trooper had been following the car and gave the driver something to eat as emergency responders arrived. Authorities say Christopher's actions may have saved not only his life and Smith's, but those of other drivers as well. Nice going, Christopher. 